Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Retrospective Gaming. In this episode, we will be covering Knights of the Old Republic, a personal favorite of mine. Now, I first played this game back in 2004 when I was barely a teenager, and I just got done replaying it a couple of days ago, and I still love it as much as I did a decade ago. From the characters to the settings to overall the execution that the developers did with this game is damn near flawless. Now let's get on with the retrospective, shall we? After creating your character, the story starts off of you being woken up on a ship called the Endar Spar. Not knowing who you are or what's going on, you run into fellow Republic soldier Tras Olgo and are informed that the ship is being attacked and that you guys must find Bastila, a Jedi who is very important to the story. After killing a couple of enemies, you run into Darth Bandon, Darth Malak's apprentice, Darth Malak being the one that's attacking the ship. Tras Olgo selfishly holds Darth Bandon off so that you can escape. You run into Cartho Nassi, a Republic pilot, and after realizing that Bastila is not on the ship and that you guys need to get the heck out of here, you get into the escape pods and you go on to your first world terrace. Now, that's all I want to go into as far as the story wise because I don't want to spoil it for anyone that has watched this video and that hasn't played this game yet. But what I must say about the story is that the setting is really great in this game. The different worlds you will go to, like Kashyyyk, the planet filled with Wookiees, with its trees and its jungles, or Tatooine, the desert planet, where the Jabba's running around, and it looks like just one big endless desert. This is what really engrosses you into the game. And the situations that go on. This is not just a story between good and evil, or this is the bad guy, and you're the good guy. Because a very important plot twist will happen, and I guarantee you, you will not see it coming. But a lot of the choices in this game, a lot of them are actually gray. It's not just good and evil. It's about you struggling to find out what you are. And the choices that you make will reflect on yourself and the characters around you. Now, the most important thing that I think that this story got right was the side characters, the characters that will join you in your party. All of these characters can have their own game based on their backstory, and I truly mean that because they have fleshed the story out very well. My two favorite side characters, party members, are Candorus, the war-hardened Mandalorian, and HK-47, the homicidal robot that has a very interesting way of referring to humans. These side characters have their own personalities, and they will butt heads with you, and they will butt heads with each other. They have their own opinions, and they're not afraid to say it. That's what makes the game great, that these part people are just not tacked on to follow you just for the sake of it. That they have their own reasons why, and that they have their own distinct personalities, own backgrounds, which make this game great. And sometimes they will come into conflict, conflict with you and each other. And that's what makes this seems more real. And now, great story and great atmosphere is nothing if the gameplay lacks. But fortunately for Knights of the Republic, the gameplay does shine. Especially with character interaction and the story and the way your character is involved in it. But the combat's good too. Now, when you, you do not start the game off as a Jedi, you have to work your way into becoming one. And that is fine, because it does not lack. Now there are several different ways you can customize your character. Of course from buying weapons and armor and customizing his portrait even though there's not that many choices. There are certain things that you could do. For example, if there's a room full of uh, bad guys or whatever and you can't go in there or you just don't feel like going in and taking them out. Just get a couple of computer spikes and if you have a good skill level you can, you can hack a patrol bot. And have them do the dirty work for you. And this is where Knights of the Republic really shines. Which is the choices that you have in the world. And yes, being good or being bad or being a mix of both does matter in this game. Because let's say that you are you don't have the greatest skill and charisma to persuade people. Well, when you become a Jedi, you can use your force... To basically force them 
into giving you your way. Of course, if you have good characters in your party, they will look down upon you and you will get dark side points, but nonetheless, you can do that. And that's where I really fell in love with this game, is basically the character choices that you have. And yes, they do react. For example, Candrus is on the dark side. And if you basically help somebody out, then he will crack a joke at you and look down upon you calling you a wimp and calling you soft. But on the other side, if you have a good character with you and you do something bad, then they will look down on you. And that's the way the that's the way it works. And yes, at near the end of the game, your party members do make a drastic and final reaction to whether you're whether you choose light or dark. And it does reflect, especially if you're on the dark side because it starts to reflect on your uh your character making them making them look pale and that's the great thing about this game of course you can go to a workbench and work on your armor or you know guns and everything and if you have, and when you have lightsabers you can modify their damage and their um multipliers with gent with uh, crystals and that's the great thing so overall the, the gameplay is not too intimidating and complex for newcomers RPGs, but it's not too shallow enough for veterans to enjoy this game. It is overall a great experience, no matter if you're a novice, intermediate, or advanced on RPGing. Now to the sound. I absolutely love the sound in this game. The blasters, the lightsabers, even a little mini game where you're on a turret and you have to shoot um, the fighters down. When you're, when you're traveling in between worlds, they all sound very authentic and very good. But what really brings this game to life is the voice acting. The voice acting is very great. Everyone characters, nearly everyone character delivers. Even the non-essential characters, even a random guy walking on the street, or the guy preaching about how bad the, the other species are, they deliver too. And that's what makes this world truly authentic. In conclusion, this is a very great role-playing game, and it it biggest strength is its atmosphere and its story. Yes, there are a couple of things that I don't like about it. Yes, I do not like the fact that that I think there should have been a couple of more powers for a Jedi. There, there's a good amount, but of course, some are restricted to the light side and the dark side, and after that. There is not really that much variety in Jedi powers. There's enough, but I felt that there could have been more. And I love the animations in the game, but especially when you're melee combat, I felt that there could have been more animations because when you're in a long fight with somebody, they basically do the same three or four maneuvers. But these are our nitpickings. These are very minor, and they do, they do not spoil the experience at all. This is a great game, and to anyone that hasn't played it, I recommend that you get it. And I also recommend that you get the mod, Solomon's Revenge. Great mod, and it's basically better than a lot of paid DLCs, but you can get it for free. I'll leave a link. And yes, there is a Knights of the Republic too, and I will be covering that game very soon. Thanks for watching.